Pope Pascal I wished to transfer the remains of the saint to a place of honor. Now this is what they had seen, peering through the ancient veil which covered the body. Incorruptibility stands as a profound marvel within the Catholic and Orthodox Christian traditions. It refers to the miraculous preservation of a body, resisting decomposition after death. Unlike mere mummification or modification, these incorrupt bodies often exude a sweet aroma known as the odor of sanctity. Within these faiths, an incorrupt body is frequently seen as an affirmation of the individual's sanctity, serving as a divine testament to their holy lives on earth. Number 1. Santa Bernadette de Lourdes Born as Bernadette Soubirous in 1844 in Lourdes, France, Santa Bernadette's life is one of deep faith, simplicity, and extraordinary visions. Coming from a humble background, her family struggled with poverty, and she, in turn, was tasked with shepherding duties from a tender age. It was during one such chore in February 1858, near the Grotto of Massabiel, that Bernadette reported her first vision of a lady dressed in white with a blue belt and golden roses on her feet. Over the next five months, Bernadette experienced 18 apparitions. The mysterious lady, whom she referred to as Aquero, that one, would eventually identify herself with the words, I am the Immaculate Conception. This declaration astounded many theologians, as the dogma of the Immaculate Conception had only been formally defined by Pope Pius IX in 1854. Bernadette, with her limited education, was unaware of such theological intricacies. The Aparitians drew massive crowds, and with them came skeptics and believers Alec. The lady instructed Bernadette to dig in a particular spot in the grotto, which led to the discovery of a previously unknown spring. The waters from this spring soon became associated with miraculous healings, turning Lourdes into one of the most visited pilgrimage sites in the world. While Bernadette's visions granted Lourdes its prominence in the Christian world, they also brought scrutiny and challenges to her personal life. Yet she remained steadfast, entering the Sisters of Charity convent in Nevers at the age of 22. She led a life marked by humility, service, and prayer until her death at the age of 35 in 1879. Her body, exhumed multiple times as part of the canonization process, astounded many. It remained incorrupt, showing minimal signs of decomposition. Today, visitors to the Chapel of St. Bernadette in Nevers can witness this marvel. Displayed in a crystal coffin, her body, appearing serene and almost lifelike, serves as a silent testament to her sanctity. The oxidized rosary in her hands further signifies the passage of time, contrasting the state of her preserved body. Santa Bernadette de Lourdes remains an enduring symbol of faith, miracles, and divine grace in the Catholic Church. Number 2. San Juan Maria Vianney Born in 1786 in Dardilly, France, San Juan Maria Vianney's journey to sainthood was colored with both simplicity and profound spiritual depth. Growing up during the turbulent times of the French Revolution, his early years were marked by religious persecution. Despite this, Vianney's family remained devout, fostering in him a deep-seated faith and a desire to serve God. Entering the seminary proved challenging for Vianney. His academic struggles, particularly with Latin, nearly thwarted his priestly ambitions. Yet, his evident piety and determination moved his superiors to overlook these shortcomings, and in 1815, he was ordained a priest. He was then assigned to the small, spiritually indifferent town of Ars. What Vienne encountered, there was a community largely distanced from their faith, but this didn't deter him. Instead, it fueled his mission. With an unyielding zeal, Vianney threw himself into his pastoral duties. His sermons, imbued with fervor, resonated deeply, turning the hearts of many. His dedication went beyond the pulpit. He often spent 12 to 16 hours in the confessional guiding souls back to God. Miracles and prophecies became associated with him, drawing even more to ours. 
By 1855, the tiny town was welcoming nearly 20,000. Pilgrims annually all eager to see the humble priest. Beyond his transformative influence in Ars, Vianney was known for his ascetic lifestyle. He often denied himself food and sleep, living off boiled potatoes and taking rest only a few hours a night. To Vianney, these personal sacrifices were a means to draw closer to God and intercede for his parishioners. Vianney passed away in 1859, leaving behind a legacy of spiritual renewal. Recognizing his exemplary life, the Catholic Church beatified him in 1905 and subsequently canonized him in 1925. Pope Pius V, acknowledging Viennese unparalleled dedication as a parish priest, declared him the patron saint of parish priests. When it came to the state of his body after death, Viennet, like a few other saints, presented a wondrous sign. His body remains incorrupt, resisting the natural course of decomposition. Encased in a glass reliquary in the Basilica of Ars, Viennet appears serene, almost as if in a state of sleep. For the thousands who visit Ars, his body stands as a testament to his sanctity and the divine mysteries of faith. Through San Juan Maria Vianney, the Church continues to celebrate the transformative power of unwavering faith and devotion. Number 3. Santa Teresa Margarita Born as Anna Maria Reddy in 1747 in Arezzo, Italy, Santa Teresa Margarita hailed from a noble lineage. However, the trappings of nobility were to be overshadowed by her profound spiritual inclinations. From her tender years, Anna Maria displayed a contemplative nature, often found deep in introspection. Young as she was, she would frequently wonder aloud, seeking to understand the essence of God. Her time within the walls of the convent saw her embracing the Carmelite ethos with zeal. She embodied the spirit of the order with her mantra, to suffer and be silent. More than a learned teacher, Teresa Margarita became a living testament to spiritual life. Her deep devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus marked her days, and her reverence for the Virgin of Carmen was unwavering. For Teresa Margarita, the sacred heart symbolized boundless divine love, while the Virgin of Carmen epitomized protective grace. Beyond her devotions, Teresa Margarita's life in the convent was characterized by mystical experiences. She often entered into deep ecstatic trances, which, while a testament to her profound spiritual connection, also took a toll on her health. Her physical constitution began to wane, but her spirit remained indomitable. Teresa Margarita passed away at the tender age of 22, leaving behind a legacy of fervent devotion. The process of canonization posthumously cast light upon her sanctity, and she was beatified in 1929 and canonized in 1934. When her body was exhumed as a part of the canonization process, it was found to be incorrupt. Today, her preserved form rests in a glass sepulcher, to onlookers, she appears to be in peaceful slumber, clutching a crucifix, symbolizing her unwavering faith. For many, Santa Teresa Margarita remains a beacon of divine love and unwavering devotion. Her incorrupt body, juxtaposed against her short-lived earthly existence, speaks volumes about the mysteries of faith and the rewards of true devotion. Number 4. San Vicente de Paul in the annals of Catholic history, few figures shine as luminously as San Vicente de Paul, a man whose life was an embodiment of charity and service. Born in 1581 in Puy, France, Vicente's early years gave little indication of the monumental legacy he would leave behind. After completing his theological studies, he was ordained a priest at the age of 19, marking the commencement of an extraordinary spiritual journey. The 17th century in France was a time of both cultural flourishing and societal disparities. Amidst this backdrop, San Vicente discerned his true calling, to serve the poor and the marginalized. 
Recognizing the vast chasm between the privileged and the destitute, he embarked upon various charitable endeavors, setting the gold standard for organized charity. In 1625, he founded the Congregation of the Mission, often known as the Vincentians, or Lazarists. This congregation aimed to evangelize rural areas and train priests, ensuring that even the most remote villages were spiritually nourished. But his commitment didn't stop at spiritual nourishment. Observing the dire conditions of the impoverished, particularly those afflicted by the repercussions of war, he took tangible steps to alleviate their suffering. San Vicente's charitable inclinations weren't restricted to the French borders. With a vision transcending national confines, he organized missions to regions as far away as Madagascar, showcasing a truly global commitment to the gospel's call. Perhaps one of his most enduring contributions was the establishment of the Daughters of Charity in 1633, alongside St. Louise de Marillac. This institution, primarily composed of peasant women, was revolutionary. Rather than being cloistered, these women were active in the community, directly tending to the sick and poor. They became the forerunners of modern nursing and set an example for numerous other religious congregations. His final resting place in Paris became a site of veneration. When his body was exhumed over a century after his death, it was found to be incorrupt, defying the natural process of decay. Today, the preserved form of San Vicente de Paul stands as a testament to his sanctity. Encased in glass within the chapel of the Mother House of the Daughters of Charity in Paris, his incorrupt body remains an enduring symbol of selfless devotion and unwavering faith. Number 5. Saint Silvan Amidst the myriad of saints revered in the Catholic Church, Saint Silvan emerges as an enigmatic figure, shrouded in the mists of time. While many saints are celebrated for detailed accounts of their lives and miracles, Silvan's veneration springs from the profound mystery surrounding him and the miraculous state of his remains. The few fragmented records that remain indicate that Silvan lived during the early Christian era, a period rife with persecution. Embracing Christianity was an act of profound courage, often leading believers to face disdain, ostracism, or even death. Silvan, with unwavering faith, chose to align himself with the teachings of Christ, a decision that would culminate in his martyrdom. Although the exact details of his sacrifice are lost to history, it's believed he met his and Dewey to his steadfast commitment to his faith, paying the ultimate price for his beliefs. While the events of his life and martyrdom remain scantily documented, Saint Silvan's posthumous journey garners significant attention. In a remarkable defiance of natural processes, Silvan's body has remained incorrupt for over 1,600 years. This astonishing preservation stands as one of the most compelling cases of incorruptibility within the church. Encased in a glass reliquary, his body is vested in a red tunic, reminiscent of the martyrs' traditional attire. The visual impact is profound. Silvan appears not as a relic from a bygone era, but as a silent witness, frozen in time, bridging the gap between the early days of Christianity and the present. The significance of Silvan's incorruptibility cannot be overstated. In an age when the very essence of Christianity was under threat, martyrs like Silvan served as beacons of hope, fortifying the faith of believers. His undecayed body further reinforces this sentiment. For many, it stands as a divine affirmation of Silvan's sanctity and the truth of his sacrifice. Today, the resting place of Saint Silvan draws the devout and the curious alike. For believers, it offers a tangible connection to the early church, a silent testament to the sacrifices made for the faith. For skeptics and historians, it presents an enigma, challenging our understanding of biology and the passage of time. In the grand tapestry of Christian history, Saint Silvan might be considered a minor thread, overshadowed by more illustrious figures. 
yet his enduring physical presence, coupled with the mysteries that envelop him, ensures that he remains an intriguing and venerated figure, continuing to inspire awe and reverence through the ages. Number 6. Santa Veronica de Juliani In the rich tapestry of Christian saints, Santa Veronica de Juliani weaves a narrative that blends unwavering piety with profound mystical experiences. Born Ursula Giuliani in 1660 in Mercatello, Italy, Veronica's spiritual inclinations surfaced early, marking her as a child of exceptional devotion. Her youthful days, though occasionally marked by the impetuousness typical of children, were increasingly characterized by deepening spirituality and a draw towards monastic life. Responding to this celestial calling, Veronica entered the Capuchin Poor Clares in Città di Castello, embracing the life of a nun with zeal. In the sequestered realm of the convent, she took the name Veronica and began a spiritual journey that would see her grapple with both divine ecstasies and intense sufferings. Her devout practices, often culminating in ecstatic visions, positioned her as a mystic of notable repute within the confines of her cloistered world. Central to Veronica's mystical experiences were her revelations related to the Passion of Christ. She recounted vivid visions of Christ's sufferings, and these weren't mere intangible experiences. They manifested physically on her, most notably as the stigmata, wounds mirroring those of Christ's crucifixion. This rare phenomenon, accompanied by her deep spiritual insights, drew attention, both supportive and skeptical. While the church authorities subjected her to rigorous examinations, her genuine piety and the authenticity of her experiences became increasingly evident. Santa Veronica de Giuliani was beatified in 1804 and canonized in 1839, her life and posthumous miracles underscoring her divine favor. Today, her incorrupt body rests in the monastery of Città di Castello, offering a serene testament to her sanctity. In the annals of Christian mystics, Santa Veronica de Giuliani's story stands out, not just for her intense spiritual experiences, but also for the tangible physical manifestations of her revelations. Through her, the boundaries between the corporeal and the spiritual blur, reminding believers of the profound mysteries of faith. Number 7. Santa Zita In the heart of Tuscany, the city of Lucca reveres a saint whose legacy is intertwined with simplicity, devotion, and miraculous tales, Santa Zita. Born in 1218 to a poor but devout family in Monsagrati, Zita's life was not one of grandeur or great theological exploits. Instead, her sainthood sprang from the earnest piety and kindness she exhibited in her everyday life. From the tender age of 12, Zita entered the service of the Fatinelli family in Lucca. For nearly half a century, she worked diligently as a domestic servant. But it wasn't her dedication to her chores that set Zita apart. It was her unwavering commitment to infusing every task, no matter how mundane, with love and reverence for God. To Zita, service transcended mere labor. It became an act of devotion. She often remarked that she served two masters, the Fatinelli family and God. While her days were consumed with domestic duties, her nights and any spare moments were dedicated to prayer and acts of charity. Zita's kindness became legendary in Luca. She was known to give away her own food and clothing to those in greater need, trusting in divine providence to provide. On one famous occasion, she surreptitiously took bread from the Fatinelli home to feed the poor, only to have the loaves miraculously turn into roses when questioned. Yet Zita's story doesn't end with her death. When her body was exhumed centuries later, it was found to be remarkably preserved. Not truly incorrupt, but mummified, her body's state was seen by many as a testament to her purity and holiness. Today, her remains can be viewed in the Basilica di San Frediano in Lucca, where she lies in a glass reliquary, a beacon of devotion and love.
Santa Zita's life serves as a reminder that sainthood is not reserved for theologians, bishops, or martyrs alone. Through simple acts of love, diligence, and charity, even a humble maid can leave an indelible mark on the annals of history. Number 8. San Juan Bosco Nestled in the 19th century's tapestry of saints, San Juan Bosco shines brilliantly, not as a mystic or a martyr, but as an educator and a beacon of hope for the youth. Born in 1815 in Becci, Italy, young Bosco grew up in a world where the Industrial Revolution was reshaping societies. Rapid urbanization often led to young souls getting lost in the tumultuous transition, left uneducated and easily drawn into a life of crime. Recognizing the dire need to guide these young spirits, Bosco dedicated his life to their cause. With an innate ability to understand and connect with them, he used innovative pedagogical methods that went beyond mere instruction. His approach, later termed the preventive system, emphasized love rather than punishment, understanding rather than rebuke. He believed in winning over hearts through kindness, reasoning, and religion. In 1859, to solidify and expand his mission, Bosco founded the Salesian Society, named in honor of St. Francis de Sales, renowned for his gentle and loving nature. The Salesians, as they came to be known, committed themselves to the education and betterment of young boys, particularly the poor and the abandoned. Later, with Maria Domenica Mazzarello, he also co-founded the Institute of the Daughters of Mary Help of Christians to cater to the needs of young girls. Under Bosco's guidance, the Salesian Society burgeoned. Schools, oratories, and workshops sprouted, not just in Italy, but across the globe, with the mission to educate and instill moral values in the youth. The resonance of Bosco's work was palpable. He wasn't merely producing educated individuals, but was shaping responsible and ethical citizens. When Bosco passed away in 1888, he left behind a legacy that transcended time. Recognizing his invaluable contributions, the Catholic Church canonized him in 1934. But the mysteries surrounding Bosco didn't end there. When his remains were later examined, his body was found to be incorrupt. Today, it rests in a basilica in Turin, drawing countless devotees who venerate him as a guardian of the young. San Juan Bosco's life stands as an epitome of dedication and love. In a world in flux, he anchored countless souls, guiding them towards light and purpose. Through his teachings, his Salesian legacy, and his incorrupt body, Bosco continues to inspire, underscoring the profound impact one individual can have on humanity. Number 9. Papa Beato Pio Noveno Papa Beato Pio Noveno, often remembered as Pius IX, holds a unique and enduring place in the annals of papal history. Ascending the papal throne in 1846, his reign extended over three decades, making it the longest pontificate in the storied lineage of the Catholic Church. During his tenure, Pio Noveno navigated the church through tumultuous waters. The 19th century was a period of significant geopolitical changes, with nationalism on the rise and traditional monarchies facing challenges. This shifting landscape had direct implications for the papal states and the governance of the church. Pio Noveno, understanding the zeitgeist, sought to modernize and reconcile the church's position with the changing times. However, his efforts often put him at odds with emerging nationalistic sentiments, especially in the Italian peninsula. Beyond administrative and theological affairs, Pio Noveno was deeply devoted to Marian piety. His papacy declared the dogma of the Immaculate Conception, further elevating the veneration of the Virgin Mary within the Church. When Pio Noveno passed away in 1878, he left behind a legacy of resilience, adaptability, and deep faith. His beatification in 2000 was a testament to his contributions to the Church, However, an enduring miracle associated with him is the state of his remains. His body, remarkably preserved, defies the ravages of time. 
encased in a glass sarcophagus in the Basilica of San Lorenzo Fori Lemura in Rome, the incorrupt body of Pio Noveno serves as a silent witness to his sanctity and the mysteries of faith. In the pantheon of papal leaders, Papa Beato Pio Noveno's legacy endures, not just for the length of his reign, but for the depth of his impact during pivotal moments in church history. Number 10. Saint Catherine Labore. Saint Catherine Labore, a humble figure who emerged from the quiet corridors of convent life, became an integral voice in the devotional landscape of the Catholic Church. Born in 1806 in the Burgundy region of France, Catherine's early life gave subtle hints of the spiritual greatness that lay ahead. The death of her mother when Catherine was just nine years old brought about her first profound spiritual experience. Kneeling before a statue of the Blessed Virgin, she felt an overwhelming sensation of being embraced by the maternal love of Mary. As she matured, Catherine felt a calling to religious life. Her spiritual journey led her to the Daughters of Charity in Paris. Here, in the stillness of the convent, Catherine experienced a series of Marian apparitions that would mark her indelibly. The most significant of these occurred in 1830. In her visions, the Virgin Mary revealed a design for a medal, now renowned as the Miraculous Medal. Mary's promise was clear, all who wore the medal would receive great graces. Catherine's role was not to be a public preacher or a missionary. Instead, she became the silent bearer of this divine message, working behind the scenes to ensure the creation and distribution of the miraculous medal. The medal, with its distinctive design and the invocation, O Mary, conceived, without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee, rapidly gained popularity, becoming a beloved sacramental in Catholic devotion. Catherine passed away in 1876, her mission accomplished, and her identity as the seer of the miraculous medal still a secret to many. It wasn't until her beatification process that her role became widely known. In a divine affirmation of her sanctity, when her body was exhumed in 1933, it was found to be incorrupt. Today, her body lies in a glass reliquary in the chapel of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal in Paris, drawing pilgrims from around the world. St. Catherine Labouret's life story is a testament to quiet obedience, unwavering faith, and the profound ways in which the divine can work through the most unassuming of his servants. Number 11. St. Charbel Makhlouf From the rugged landscapes of Lebanon emerged a figure of profound spiritual depth, St. Charbel Makhlouf. Born in 1828 in the small mountain village of Beka Kafra, Charbel, baptized as Youssef, was imbued with a deep love for God from a young age. Drawn to monastic life, he entered the monastery of St. Marin at Anaya, adopting the name Charbel in honor of a second-century Christian martyr. Within the confines of the monastery, Charbel embraced the ascetic life with fervor. His days were woven with prayer, manual labor, and contemplation. Ordained a priest in 1859, Charbel exuded a piety that drew both the faithful and the curious. His life was a silent testament to his unwavering commitment to Christ, and he often retreated to a hermitage to immerse himself deeper into contemplative prayer. Saint Charbel's sanctity was evident not just in his life but also in the miracles attributed to him, both during his life and posthumously. Reports of miraculous healings and divine interventions associated with him spread across Lebanon and beyond. However, the most enduring testament to his holiness was revealed upon his death in 1898. When his body was interred, an inexplicable glow emanated from his grave. This phenomenon continued for several months, drawing thousands of pilgrims. When his tomb was eventually opened, his body was found to be incorrupt, defying the natural processes of decay. This miraculous state continued for over six decades, with the body often exuding a blood-like liquid. 
In recognition of his profound sanctity, Charbel was beatified in 1965 and canonized in 1977, becoming the first Lebanese saint. Today, his incorrupt remains are venerated in the monastery of St. Marin, a beacon of hope and faith to believers worldwide. St. Charbel Makhlouf's legacy is a testament to the profound spirituality that can be achieved in a life dedicated to prayer and contemplation. His life and miracles serve as a bridge, connecting the traditions of the Eastern Church with the broader Christian community.